Hello again, my friends. The folks at Riftcat have asked me to review their V-Ridge software. It previously allowed you to stream live your Steam VR experience through to your phone. You would put that in a Google Cardboard and then you could play some Steam VR games live uh, through your phone, which is a pretty cool little setup. But what's interesting is that they now have a preview build of that same experience on the Quest. So they now have a way for the Oculus Quest to play through streaming your Steam VR library. So I thought that was a little too good to be true. I really wanted to try it for myself. And uh, thankfully they provided me the full version to try out. And now I'm here to give you my thoughts on it. And for full transparency, I want to let you know I was compensated for my time in this review. So let's get down to details. I'll link to the detailed install instructions below, but it's all pretty straightforward. There's a PC client for VRidge and a client that you install on your Quest. After it's all installed, you need to launch VRidge on the PC, then launch it on the Quest, and then press play on the PC. The first time I successfully launched it, it required a fresh new room setup for Steam VR. It was kind of a head trip going through the room setup process with the Quest hardware. It was kind of like I was inside the Inception movie, doing Steam VR room setup with the Quest. Like I said previously, by default you need to launch VRidge on the PC, then launch it on the Quest, and then press play on the PC. But in VRidge settings, you can choose advanced settings, and then under Steam VR options, choose Steam VR Auto Start on Connection. And that's really handy to have on because after you have it started on the Quest, then you don't have to go back to your PC to fully run it. You can have it fully launched from the Quest. So really recommend you have that on. After you do that, you can hide the advanced settings to reveal a simple quality slider. I recommend you slide that all the way up if you have a good enough Wi-Fi signal. All of my testing was done on a 5 GHz signal. And by default, audio streaming's turned off, which I find an odd default. You'll definitely want to click audio streaming in settings to enable that. Whenever the V-Ridge driven Steam VR would launch, the room scale would always be oriented so that I'm standing in the front right corner of the room scale. So I had to be conscious of always launching it while I was actually standing and facing in the right spot to match what my room scale would become. That way, after it launches, I can step back into my true room scale center to start playing. Once you're up and running, the functionality of the Steam VR interface is all there. Browse your library, change volume, and even use advanced settings if you have that installed. When you play like this, the overall experience is blurry and sometimes glitchy, which you kind of expect in software that is trying to stream a VR signal over Wi-Fi. Some simple experiences, like Elven Assassin, work out fine enough, since you're simply firing arrows without a real need for more controls. But I tried playing Skyrim, and noticed almost immediately that the main touchpad button on my right hand wasn't mapped to any button on the touch controller. So I was unable to talk to any characters or open any doors, which doesn't let you get very far in the game. When I was playing Beat Saber, the saber orientation, instead of being vertical like you would expect, was actually 90 degrees forward. So it's like I was holding a very long cane or, <laughs> or like holding a gun, and that was the orientation for the saber, which was definitely odd for that game, but that's how it was. And of course, getting a drop in signal isn't good while playing Beat Saber. I feel pretty confident that the button mapping issues and the controller orientation issues that I faced in Skyrim and Beat Saber will be solved in time. But when it comes to the overall blurriness of the imagery and the dropouts in signal, um, we'll just have to see how that pans out in time. Um, right now, it's a real bummer when you're playing Beat Saber and it completely glitches out, and, <laughs> excuse me, completely glitches out and you lose signal. Um, that's a real bummer when you're playing. And I'm sure they will improve that and make it better as they develop the software more and more. But exactly how good that will get, uh, only time will tell. Uh, V-Ridge is free to download, and the first five minutes is free to play. You can get an additional five minutes if you register, but to play unlimited would be 15 bucks for the software. So uh, for the $15 price tag, I feel like it has more 
It needs to develop more and they need to iron out more of the kinks before I would recommend it for $15. So, but it'll be interesting to see how the software develops over time. It's a pretty, pretty interesting workaround to get your Steam VR library into the quest. So those are my thoughts on V Ridge. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you later. All right, bye. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya.